they are not wanted or what they do doesn't go noticed, <coughs> then they'll lose their positive morale. I'd like to warn the board, but once you lose that, you won't easily get it back. Sure, we'll eventually get a contract, we'll get our benefits, we'll get maybe a little money or whatever, but you won't get that morale back. It'll become a job for most teachers. They've been shown that it's about dollars and cents. It's not about how much you care, it's not about what you bring to the classroom, not how long you stay, it's about dollars and cents. It's a job, that's it. And in the long run, who suffers? Kids. So for the kids, I would urge that the board show some leadership, show they know that this building was built for the kids, show the community that you're educational leaders, not just directors of a multi-million dollar enterprise, and get the contract set. just from seeing them in the halls and having them in the class. And I know every single one of them has had an impact on my life. Um, positive impact, I'll point that out. Um, <laughs> just to clarify. Um, but uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about Mr. Mitchell. Um, when I was a sophomore, he was entering his second year teaching at, uh, at Mendham, and I only knew really of him by reputation. Uh, he'd taken like, the, the withering robotic thought into an internationally competitive, closely knit team. Many of my friends were on the team and spoke very highly of him, so I decided to eat lunch in the tech room and meet the famous Mr. Mitchell. I was immediately taken aback at how much the students respected him. The sole fact that Mr. Mitchell opened his room's doors to students at lunch surprised me. I later learned that he often arrived an hour or two before school and welcomed students to use all the tech room resources to their academic advantage. I have always been an honor student, and sometimes the sheer amount of work I receive is so overwhelming. It's not your fault, I promise. <laughs> it's so overwhelming with my busy schedule. To have a place that's open before school, at lunch, after school, sometimes it's late at 7 o'clock at night, was and still is invaluable. At the end of my sophomore year, with my junior year looming before me, Mr. Mitchell approached me with a proposition take a brand new international baccalaureate program entitled IB Design Technology. As I'm looking to go into the field of engineering or teaching, uh, the, course <laughs> the, course description, the course description seemed right up my alley, so I agreed. The material, however, was not the only reason I chose the course. I was excited to have someone who was respected by faculty and students alike as a teacher and a mentor. In his IB Tech class this year, he provided a structured learning environment which is extremely important with such tough material. And I know these, a lot of these teachers teach IB classes, so they know how hard it is. Um, uh, hang on. Uh, oh, although I never had the pleasure of having Mr. Mitchell as a technology applications or co computer-aided design instructor, I personally watched him teach both types of classes, and I am in awe of his ability to command respect from all types of kids. As a technology teacher, to meet the requirement put by the board that, uh, for or the state, I don't know, I'm not sure, with uh, the year of practical arts, um, he sees everybody from you know the jocks and the skater dudes to the total eggheads and nerds, that's me. Uh, <laughs> when I heard that Mr. Mitchell was let go, I was so shocked and angry. I started a Facebook page devoted to keeping him in Mendham High School. Within 24 hours, the page had over 100 likes, and I just checked about 10 minutes ago, we're up to 206, it's still growing. Most of these people, I didn't even know they knew who Mr. Mitchell was. Students from all walks of life were angry and upset over him losing his job. I just want to say, as a student who has seen Mr. Mitchell teach all types of classes, I understand how valuable he is to the community at the school. Beforehand, I was, I was a nerd, and my freshman year, just like Mr. Godding had said earlier, I didn't really know I never had a place. I just kind of wandered about, went home at the end of the day, and then you know got up at seven o'clock or six o'clock in the morning to go to back to school again. But when Mr. Mitchell came into my life and started being my teacher, and even even when I didn't have him in have him in class, he started being my teacher. After that, I started to feel like I really wanted to come to school in the morning. And past that, I wanted to stay after school. 
I know it's shocking. They want to stay in the building more than eight hours in a day. But I, I would stay, I still stay until five or six at night. It's great having a quiet place where you can do homework. And I mean, I love the other tech teachers. Mr. Wetzel and Ms. Tarsi are fantastic. But unfortunately, they don't have, well, Mrs. Ms. Tarsi has a family and she lives in Pennsylvania and they can't quite offer the same amount of time as Mr. Mitchell has. He's there five o'clock in the morning till seven o'clock at night most nights. He's taking the robotics club, turned it into an internationally competitive team. I don't know if we have another team at the high school, either high school, that's internationally competitive. They win all sorts of awards. He's a fantastic teacher. He, I've learned so much from him. I, I can't even put it into words. I've just learned so much from him as a future teacher and as a possible future engineer. I mean, the, the man is invaluable for me. It's, it's, so entertaining to watch him teach, and I just really think it's a shame that you're going to let him go, and to not know why is kind of kind of sad. So thank you very much.
fact finding, but we hope not to, to um, we hope to meet before that. All right, thank you. It is.